Hey, 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 Internet. How are you today? Um, I'm digging this. I'm kind of having fun doing this. Um, doing these little daily videos while I'm building things. So um, I realized as I was doing this, there's going to be no way that the 100% of the experience is going to get recorded. Um, I'm doing little bits and pieces where I find little windows in the day, doing a little bit at um, lunch at work, a little bit, you know, kind of before I do supper and stuff like that. So not all, uh, all of it's going to happen on camera. Um, so I'll keep, get you up to speed with some of the things I've done and share some of the learns as we go along the way. So um, with that being said and out of the way, we've done a little bit more, uh, but not a ton. So you haven't missed anything too crazy. Um, I did uh, end up gluing the feet on these bad boys. So the feet are there. And I did glue these on. Um, it's kind of important, at least for what I'm trying to do, is to glue these on early so they're in there nice and firm so that I can get the spacing right to uh, to do it on the base because I wanted to show you guys that. So I did that. And then I did glue the torso on. Um, it was just going to make um, doing things a lot easier. I still left this leg undone so we can just uh, pop that leg in and out as we need to. Um, and this is still undone. Uh, but I started doing the some of the magnetizing uh, for the arms and learned a couple things. So. You know, I hadn't done a lot of really green stuff magnetizing. Most of the time, I was either doing something like this, which I'll show you in a second, or um, it's just on a smaller model where you're it's solid plastic and you're just dr drilling a hole into the plastic the exact size of the magnet. So um, what I realized is as the green stuff hardened, it sort of changed shape. Even if it was kind of firm, it sort of seemed to uh, almost expand. Um, so those little like little bumps and registration marks I was trying to use were getting sort of distorted and just wasn't working. Um, so we kind of had to redo some of it. But I essentially just jammed some green stuff in there, uh, put the magnet on while it was curing, and uh it's on there it's pretty solid it doesn't it doesn't really like if i grab it just by this you know it's in there solid and it's not twisting because this one has that little piece and then the other arm same sort of thing was just sort of jammed the green stuff in and got that in um, nice and uh, accurate and then pushed it in a little further um, just to make sure that it would kind of hold tight um, as the green stuff was getting was sometimes pushing the magnet out a little bit um, and then the magnet would be sitting too far and then the arm wouldn't be flush. And I really want the arm to be flush because if I'm going to be doing this, I want it to look seamless. And to do it seamless with no gaps with a magnet means it's got to sit flush. So um, it twists a little bit, but um, it's pretty solid and I don't think it's going to be an issue. So, And if it is, what we'll do is we'll just drill a little hole um, and we'll put like a pin or something to sort of lock it in place. Because um, I don't need to just like take it off all the time. So if it's a little bit fussy to get it in, that's fine with me. So we did that. We did that, so now we're getting an idea of how this is going to look with this little tentacle arm. And we can bend this a little bit because this looks like it's a little droopy, so I think I do kind of want to... Let's just even do that right... Right now. Um, and then, uh, so I did uh, magnetize the head. So here's how we did this. Let's take all this stuff off so it's a little easier to see things. And I gotta be careful because I'm definitely bumping into these a bunch. I already broke one little fish hook off of right here. Um, nobody's gonna notice or care. Uh, and then it's one less fish hook that I gotta paint. So, but I kind of don't wanna lose the hook with these skulls on it. But if that breaks off, well, we can either glue it back on or put it somewhere else. So um, what we did is I just put a piece across um, with plastic glue, a piece of sprue. Um, and then I put the head on because I could get in there. Um, I just, uh, I, I kind of basically tacked this in place with a little bit of glue and then put it on upside down and then just used, you know, really anything to get in there and just sort of line that up. So we just wanted that. Oh, you know what? Hold on, internet. Um, we're gonna have to pause this because I'm using the wrong mic and I don't know if when I plug this in, the mic will start working. So we're just gonna hit pause real quick and we're just gonna come back like that. Okay. So we should be using the good mic now, so everything should be better audio-wise. Um, hope that wasn't too terrible. Um, but uh, where was I? So yeah, so um, so we got sort of these just these two little armatures on, and then um, I glued this magnet on first because this is the one that's always going to be in place. Uh, the heads are going to swap, so this is the one that really needs to be set in place. Uh, so we glued that magnet in. Um, and then I had another magnet sort of underneath here, sort of like balanced, so that when I put it on, it stayed in place, flipped it upside down, and then just hit it with a little bit of uh, uh, really super thin super glue, just went in and put that in so it stayed in place. So we've got our magnets really locked in and secured. Um, and then the head's on, so now the head doesn't fall off. So we can sort of like essentially, you know, see what this guy's going to be. Boom, so there he is. And then obviously we need to glue, uh, magnetize that hand, but so he's sort of got that tentacle arm there. 
what do you think should it be even like up more like like swinging up because it's a tentacle so it's not necessarily i was going to have him swinging that flail but what about that what does that look like I mean, that cracked the green stuff, but that's okay. So one thing I did learn or test as well, this definitely uh, comes off. Like this is not on that solid. So if I were to like, see that? Like I can kind of peel that off. So uh, I'll actually just peel that off so we don't lose it. But, all right, not, I mean, don't lose it, but like when we're putting the green stuff on. So I think when we do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push the edges of those dots around. I'm just gonna like, because uh, I think it's going to be a lot easier just to do a bunch of little dots. Um, but let's get to it, because I think that's what we want to do today, is we want to work on this tentacle and kind of get that um, uh, get that sort of finalized. So, oh, before we do that, before we do that, that's probably what everybody actually wants to see, but let's do um, this first. So what we want to do is I want to drill the holes for the feet, and I want to get everything lined up and get the holes right, and there's one easy way to do that. And that is all right. All right, leg. you gonna be like that? You be like that, leg? All right, so we're just gonna do that. I think that was on camera. So we just this is just like um, like blue tack. It just happens to be white, um, but it's essentially the same thing as like sticky tack or blue tack. So we're just using something like that so that I can use that basically just to transfer to the base. So I'm just trying to see, do I want him because he's going to have the tentacle? Do I really want it in the middle? Do I kind of want him to one side? I usually like to have them sort of to the side so I can do a lot more with the basing. I mean, this is a pretty big base. Um, we'll have him back a little bit. We'll do him. We'll do him right like that. So then we're just going to course. Yeah. Get off of there. Oh, this stuck on too much. You know what? We're just gonna do this the way I always did it. I thought normally what I do is I'm just doing it with two pieces, so it's not as big a deal. This is a really large model, so I thought I would need more, um, but that's just not gonna cooperate. So I'm just gonna do it the way I'm used to doing it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set him on here. Let's say we want him like this, and then I'm just going to move him over a tiny bit, just about the length of the sprue. And then we're just gonna put a line where the sprue was, and then you're gonna see my head. Internet. 
Where do we want you? We want you there. I'm done with you. I'm done with you. All right. So then we're just going to drill a hole. Drill a hole. Watch your fingers. Make sure your finger is not on the other side of this. I have 100% absolutely put this drill bit right through my finger. I just, I'm sure there's no scar. Um, I forget which finger it was. Uh, and it wasn't like huge, but it was like a spot like, you know, maybe a, not quite a quarter of an inch, a little more than an eighth of an inch. Yeah, maybe a quarter of an inch, but just like went right through my finger. And that sucked, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't like the most painful thing ever. Uh, it was just one of those things where obviously your fingertips have a lot of nerves. Um, and I just kept bumping it, you know, and running into things. And anytime you want to grab anything, you know, you use your hands all the time. So, uh, so I drilled my little hole and then now I'm just gonna drill this out. So rather than trying to use the feet, um, I've just got an extra little piece of sprue here. So I just want this to fit tight, so it can't fit through yet. See, and I can jam it through. That's what I. That's what I want. I want to have to like force it through a little. All right, get yourself one of these. Get yourself a seam scraper, internet. That's what we want. I was gonna say no muss, no fuss. Uh, but there's a lot of mussing and a lot of fussing. It's just how it is. It's just how it be. You can uh, go from the other side too. It's probably a little bit better to um, even it out a little bit. All right, how are we doing? That goes through nice and snug, snug, snug. Let's actually do the other side a little bit first. Get it done, do it to it. And then again, this, the reason we do this is this keeps it um, pretty snug, right? It'll stay, I can put it on the base, move it around, give it a place to stand and to rest, uh, actually play games with it. But then I can still take it off to finish the basing, paint underneath it, all that sort of stuff. So that's in, that's in, that's in. That was good. All right, and then the foot will go on something like that. Let's do a little test. Can I push that through? Now, at this point, if these break off, that's not a big deal because what I can do is I can then put them in um, and then I can re glue it to the foot. But that's in like. Super solid. Okay, will it come out? That's the question. All right, this one's off a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus my pressure on this on the bottom side. So when I twist, I'm basically just moving the hole actually. All right, there we go, internet. And now he's on his base. He's on solid, I can grab him. Can I grab him by his arm? Ooh, almost grabbed by his arm. These big uh, bases from GW are annoying because they're almost never flat. And this one is no exception. See that? Are you seeing that it's like warped? Yeah, you can definitely see that. But anyway, there he be. Now, as I'm working on this, I've got a nice spot to set this down when I'm done sculpting it to let it dry. So that's what we're looking at. So there's your sense of scale. He is not as tall as the bone grinder. The bone grinder is big. He's a big guy. I didn't realize quite how, I mean, I knew he was big, but like seeing him compared to this guy, like he is, 
He's massive. So we're going to hack his feet off too. He's going to get these feet. He's just he's going to get those feet. We're just going to hack those feet right off. Um, this one we can hack off probably close and make a bit of a mess of it um, where this connects. Um, I don't even really, I mean, this is like, I just don't like how that's sculpted. I mean, this is an old model. Um, and, uh, anywho. But here's where we are. So let's pop this off, and then we'll have this guy standing back here. Where's Chuck? Chuck! Get old Chuck short rib in here. Chucky, get in here. You're wanted on the set. All right, so. Ooh, this is like... I can feel there's a little bit of pressure there. So um, <laughs> these plastic glue containers, if you've ever used them, sometimes you know they like to just squirt out a ton of plastic glue when you uh, don't want a ton. Um, but as a little bit of air gets in there and then the temperature changes, it's a little warmer now. So the tiny bit of air that I think that's in there is probably expanded and pushed on a little bit. Oh, unrelated, I just saw something I wanna show you. So these are my custom dice I made, Tim and Trevor, TNT. Uh, so Tim and Trevor uh, is also TNT, which is dynamite. So it looks like six of dynamite, but it's got six little dots on it. Isn't that sweet little custom dice? Anyway, what do we get? Ha ha ha! You couldn't plan that any better. Uh, and then we've got these dice, right? These are the Ogre Maw Tribes dice, which are big, chunky dice. Let's look at them side to side. Um, but Ogre Maw Tribes, I wanted to, or Ogre Maw Tribes, uh, Sons of uh, Behemoth. Actually, um, I was thinking about how to pronounce that. Tangent, let's get back into this first. I ordered a bunch of dice, uh, 30 millimeter dice, and didn't realize quite how big 30 millimeter was. I just knew they were larger, um, but didn't really like think to measure them out and see. And check these out, 30 millimeter dice from Chessex. <laughs> so I got a bunch of these so that when I'm playing, we can be dramatic. Seven, eh, that's average, we'll take it. Anyway, we'll put these back here too. We'll give you some sixes. TNT, dynamite, TNT. And I win the fight. I'm a power no, watch me explode. Um, yeah, Behemoth, Bayamat, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I've heard a few people saying, I think what I've heard the most is Behemoth, um, which is sort of what it's made me want to pronounce, but I feel like if nothing else the way I want to say is Bayamat. Sons of Bayamat, I think sounds cooler. So we're going to try to get in the habit of saying Sons of Bayamat. Um, until I hear otherwise or hear how it's confirmed. If you're watching this and know 100% how it's pronounced or something, I'm sure Games Workshop has said it. Um, but they also pronounce things differently over there, right? Like we call, they call them um, Abaddon, uh, where over here we call them Abaddon, right? So um, who's to say who's right and who's wrong? I'm right. Tim writes. Let's get on with it. All right. So we're 13 minutes in. What I'm gonna do is, if I didn't say already, um, just for the sake of making easier uploads, I'm gonna cut these at around 30 minutes. So if it seems like I've got a lot more to do, which I definitely will, um, we'll stop at 30 minutes and then I'll just do another video. Um, it's not trying to do clickbait and get more views. Um, that'll be sweet, but um, it's actually just the, my phone has a limited amount of storage and it has plenty of free space available, but when it goes to export, it needs like two to three times the space. So an hour long video literally has me deleting a bunch of couple big gigabyte apps off my phone and then having to re-download them um, or re-download and reinstall iMovie. It's just kind of annoying. So I might also try um, uploading the photos to my computer and editing from there, uh, the photos, the videos. We got a lot of green stuff here, but we got a lot of green stuff work to do. So, um, so yeah, it's not me trying to be clickbaity. Uh, it's me just like, it's literally been a hassle trying to um, save these videos. Um, it's taken me like, it took me an hour and a half last night to try to export and then it takes 10, 15, 20 minutes to export and then it fails to export because I don't have enough space and then I clear up a little more space and it says, nope, you still have enough space and then I clear up more space and then it says, okay, I'll try to export and then it finishes and it's like, no, nope, you don't have room to export and then iMovie somehow is caching all that storage space and then I have to delete iMovie, re-add the project, re-edit it even though I don't edit much, I still add a photo and a title or something like that um, and set the export settings. So anyway, it's annoying. Um, I have to adjust the volume. I do tweak the volume a little bit because the volume always seems to come through a little low. So we've got to boost the volume, put a fade in and out, adjust our transitions and our titles, right? And that's not a ton. It only takes me a couple minutes because that's why I don't like to edit. But anyway, so we're mixing up a lot of green stuff. This is probably way too much. I can actually look at it and tell you already, like this is way too much green stuff we've done. So uh, what we might need to try to do is do some of the magnetizing as well. So that is what it is. So we're just rolling it out, rolling it out. All right, let's do something while we're I'm rolling this out. I'm gonna step away. Since we're doing a tentacle, let's look at uh, 
crack in here. Where is it? Let's look at the war scroll and talk about them for a little bit while we're doing this. So, come on. All right, so I have a point of reference here. I'll just jam it on top of everything. There we go, that'll work, right? Let's make sure I have all the tools that I'm gonna want. I'm gonna wanna see this. I don't know if I'll need tweezers. I'll need my sculpting tools, probably won't need this. This is real time internet. This is what no editing gets you. Let me drop them on the floor. Move this out of the way. Maybe we'll want that. Bit of sprue. Put these over here. Let's just, just take a second to clear the deck. All right, so you should be able to see that a little bit. I can actually even zoom in on it while we're doing it now. And I gotta move everything. All right. Um, so, Kraken Eater, Mega Gargants. Kraken Eaters are grabbing greedy coastal raiders that are fiercely territorial. Unfortunately, they consider everything they can see to be their territory. Oh, much like uh, the ogres. They will fight with outraged indi indignation to take the spoils of war for their hordes. So, sweet. So what do we got? Uh, we got 35 wounds, a move of, what's the move on this guy? It starts at 11, so he's right in the middle. Um, we've got the um, War Stomper, who's 10, and the Gate Breaker, who is 12. So I'm not sure why they did the move different. Um, I didn't read all the all the uh, narrative on the models yet. Um, I keep trying to at night, but by the time I finish everything else I need to do and um, finish modeling and updating and then try to read a little bit. I like fall asleep like one paragraph in, so it's been sad, but hopefully I'll be able to read that soon. Um, so I don't know if they kind of explain why he moves at 11 and the other one was at 10 and the other one was at 12. Like, just make them all move at 12. Like, let's give them a little bit of move. We're already at a disadvantage from being a low model con army despite having the ability to count as more models, so. Um, anyway, so let's see. Let's take a look at these things. So Hurl Debris, uh, 24 inches if they're unwounded. It's three attacks. Fours to hit, threes to wound, minus one rend, D3 damage. So not great, but uh, it kind of adds up with everything else. So three attacks hitting on fours, um, realistically that's going to be one. Um, but let's say it's two. And then three plus to wound, in theory you should get one through. Um, so we're probably looking at basically one minus one rend save doing D3 damage. So at minus one rend, you've probably got something like a... Uh, on an average, I'd say it's probably a 75% chance to go through, uh, 75 to 80% chance to do two damage. So basically that attack gives you a, let's, let's round up and be a little optimistic and say you've got an 80% chance to do two damage. Um, that's not terrible on a ranged attack, right? Like that's reasonable odds, you know, it's not always going to do something, um, but it's not like super unlikely that it will do a little bit of something and it you know it certainly could spike it's got a potential of nine damage there um but realistically um if you get two you should be happy that's where you should see it so um and chipping two wounds off somebody somewhere um you know i'll take it um let's see so what else almighty stomp so this is the one that he's got an item for to take that stomp from two attacks to three attacks um and rend of three and a damage of three so right now it's two attacks Let's just sort of think about the math, because that's one of the items I see in the battle reports, the few that are out there. Um, a lot of people seem to want to take for the Kraken Eater. So let's just look at that one attack. So he's got two attacks, threes and threes. So realistically, I don't want to say you're lucky to get a wound through, um, but you know, so you've got a, um, uh, probably what is that, like an 80% chance to get one hit through, uh, at least one. Um, and then once you get that through, you're then at like a six. So you're probably at a, almost just around a 50 50 um, to get one through without them both failing. So uh, maybe it's a little more than 50 50. I'm just doing some quick, real rough and dirty math in my head. But um, and then it's minus two rend, which is going to go through on a lot of things, right? So that's not going to give things much of a save. So um, and then it's D3 damage. So yeah, you're probably looking at. Yeah, like, that's even less, in theory, damage to count on. I'd have to actually do the math, because it feels like the ranged attack shouldn't be as likely 
to do damage as that stomp. But if we switch that to three attacks, hitting on threes, now you're realistically getting two through. Um, uh, to wound... Um, you should be getting at least, so you're almost guaranteed, you know, nothing's obviously guaranteed, but it's very likely you'll get at least one through at minus three ren doing three damage. Um, so that takes you from kind of being a little lucky to do two damage to being very likely to do at least three damage. Um, that's not terrible, but that's an, it's a whole artifact just to go from, you know, let's, you know, to go f to add three damage, um, in a round of combat. Uh, for a big giant model like this, I don't know. I mean, it does make that attack look a lot nicer. And again, it can spike, right? You get you get two wounds through, um, and then all of a sudden, six damage, very, very likely. That minus three runs, no joke. So, I mean, it's got something. I have to look at their other items to really see, but um, it's not terrible, but I don't know. Uh, and then death grip, we've got just the one attack, but if you're fighting a monster, you can reroll ones, and you're already hitting on threes. So, uh, you got a 66% chance. And then if you're re-rolling threes, another 66% chance on the 17% chance to roll a one. Um, you know, some of that probably brings you closer to 70-75% uh, um, chance to hit uh, if you're attacking a monster. And then wounds on a two plus, so you're very likely to do a wound at minus three rend doing d6 damage. We'll round down and just say three. So on a monster, that's probably a 80% chance you're going to do three damage. Um... You know, so now all of a sudden looking at those two attacks, you know, if you take the sandals, the Kraken sandals, whatever they're called, you're doing six damage. Uh, and then the Shipwreck of War Club. Uh, we start at eight attacks, hitting on threes, so we'll probably get um, five to six of those through to wound. Um, on threes, we'll probably get three to four. Uh, at minus two rend. We got, let's say we got four uh, at minus two rend. We're probably going to get, on most things, three of those through at two damage. So six damage. So realistically, all together in a round of combat on somewhat average dice with real quick math, it's like he's doing 12 damage. Uh, it's not huge. It's not huge. Um, so trying to give him a lot of stuff to increase the damage. I don't know if it's really going to increase that much. Um, crushing charge. On a charge, he's going to do some damage. And those are mortal wounds. Um, D6 uh, mortal wounds on a 2 plus when he charges, so that's going to be a lot. So that's going to be huge. That's that's where a lot of damage is actually going to come from, reliable damage. So um, get off me land. That's a big one. So we're going to have to do some sculpting, and I'm going to have to think sculpting, so I don't think we're going to really get into talking about that just yet while we get this going. But let's take off a chunk of this. So some people, when they're working with green stuff, will do... Um, Obviously, that took a while um, to really mix up really thoroughly. Um, uh, some people will wait for it to cure a little bit, because huh? when you're working with it like this and it's super, uh, like, um, super th uh, tacky and kind of like really soft, um, I kind of like working with it when it's like this because I can really kind of easily um, shape some things. But um, it does make it kind of fussy to work with. So some people will let it cure a little bit, you know, 15, 20 minutes before they start working with it. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So we're just kind of flattening it out. And then I'm just going to... We're really going to be mashing this around so we don't have to get anywhere close to sort of, like, accurate to start. And in fact, we're going to push some extra on there down towards the base because I definitely want to have more down here. And uh, we're very likely going to see me break one of these off. Like, um, well, here, let's do... I don't know if this will really protect it or not, but can't hurt, right? Well, it can hurt if it uh, if it sort of like gets stuck on there. But let's see if that helps me protect that from breaking. So all right, so Getting this on there. What I'm going to do is where that cracked a little from me bending it. I'm just going to clip that off because that looks like a high point. That's going to really mess with my sculpting. All right. Oh, low power. 
So we're going to have to take a break, uh, I think, when this is done. Uh, when I hit the 30 minute mark here. Uh, but that's all right, because I think what will happen is I certainly won't finish it all. What I'll do is I'll plug my phone into charge for a minute. Uh, and then I'll work on this, and that'll help me work out some of the kinks with how I'm going to be sculpting the Kraken, uh, the tentacles, which we saw a little bit of that last night. I think seeing that process and seeing how I figure that out uh, might be kind of fun to see, like the creative process of like troubleshooting and figuring out like how am I going to get these things to work right, as opposed to just showing you, here's what you do. Uh, I think that can be very valuable because chances are, I mean, what I really like is I'd like people to be able to do their own conversions and know more about how to do a conversion uh, in general, like how to approach converting and sculpting as opposed to here's how you do this specific thing, right? Because if you can get in the mindset of doing it and figuring out how you're going to do it yourself, um, then you're not relying on finding a video doing that specific thing, right? You don't have to find a video of someone showing you how to do a octopus tentacle. Um, you just, you can figure that out for yourself. So. We're gonna need a little bit more down there, as it turns out. So we're just gonna stick that in the gas bucket. What's that from? What's that from? All right, so we're just kind of pushing this in here. These are the, uh, the early stages where we're really just trying to get the overall shape where we want it. Right, we're gonna be manipulating this stuff. Um, another thing why I like working with the green stuff when it's really fresh like this, when it hasn't started to cure, is you can like almost with like very little effort sort of make two pieces one. When two become one. That's also a reference from a song. We're all over the place today, internet. But it's Thursday, it's Thirsty Thursday. I probably should have a drink. Yeah, I haven't had a beer or anything in any of these videos, internet, what's wrong with me? You're like, Tim, are you okay? You're not drinking beer. I am okay. I've been enjoying uh, some white Russians lately. Uh, those are just so delicious. Need a little bit more right here. And to be completely honest, Internet, I don't, because this is going to be, you know, it's a tentacle on a gargant. This is obviously some, uh, a little bit of chaos magic. I don't mind if it's a little, like, swollen and gets kind of, like, even, like, a little bigger and awkward. I think that will make it look a little more natural, a little more, um, you know, um, creepy and mess with you. I think when you see an octopus tentacle, you just sort of expect to see it all, you know, start thicker and get thinner. But if it gets th and then gets like swollen up and down, you know, then you're kind of talking a little more like unnatural. And I definitely want this to be uh, a more of an unnatural vibe, right? It's a, it's a natural looking thing in the sense like it's organic shapes, but um, I definitely want this. If we can get a real creepy vibe out of this, we're gonna, we definitely want that, so. We're just kind of working the, the two pieces together here. Just trying to push that in as best we can. The other thing too that's really nice about this um, specific dental tool and how I use it is, and just with sculpting in general, generally when you're doing a lot of stuff, once you start making a pattern, it looks a lot different than when you start with just one little spot, right? When I'm just pushing these little spots in, it might look kind of messy, but if I get kind of a similar texture to this over the whole tentacle, um, that's gonna give it kind of a cool look and then it's gonna make some of my the rest of the work a little easier because it's already got kind of like a neat texture. It doesn't just look like, you know, it doesn't have fingerprints or kind of unsmooth. It kind of has some character along the whole thing. So I can work with that. So. Um, and I'm being a little extra fussy with the end here because this is going to kind of set the tone for it. So. All right, we are at 30 minutes, so I'm gonna hit pause and we will come back and we'll see how this is, uh, how this has gone.